Exactly. exactly. Good evening and welcome to the public hearing of the Board of Mayor and Aldermen. It is July 9th, 2020. It is 630. I call the public hearing to order. Uh, we have Ordinance 2019-44, an ordinance to amend Article 4, Section 4.070 of the Laverne Zoning Ordinance as it pertains to signs. This received a favorable recommendation from the Planning Commission on November 26, 2019. If anyone would like to come up and speak on this <coughs> ordinance, you're welcome to come up to the podium. Uh, please state your name and address, and you will have the floor. Would anyone like to come forward and speak? Seeing nobody coming forward to speak on this, I will call this public hearing closed. We will adjourn until 645 for citizens' comments. Seventy-one more Group A crimes reported TBI in 2019 than we did in 2010. So saying that crime is drastically up is not an accurate statement. Uh, we did have some more serious crimes, but it's happening all across our state and all across our nation. And um, when we take folks, whether they're going to big boy, big girl jail, or they're going to juvenile, uh, they usually beat us back before we get here. And Chief, one other thing is we're, we're being a little bit more transparent now. We're using Facebook, the uh, Laverne yes. Police Department's Facebook page, to disseminate some of that information, whereas in the past the community just wasn't really aware of that. That's, is that fair to say? That's correct. I've tried to make everybody aware of it as we go through the meetings at different times when we have this, that, or the other, but... Uh, it's public record. TBI won't release it until April, I believe it is, before they'll release the final report. But this is the preliminary. We've already got all of ours reported to them. They'll just go through now and make sure that the definitions are there and the definitions uh, match up with what we have and what we've reported. Um, it's kind of interesting, you know, they say that our population in 19 was about 35, 8, 19, according to the U.S. Bureau of Census estimate, compared to 32, 706. I don't think that's anywhere near it as everybody else in this room probably. I'd say it's probably somewhere in the neighborhood of 40 to 41,000. Mm -hmm. uh, because since I moved here uh, in 03, there's been so much building here. It's unreal. I retired from my first job, uh, not my first, it was actually my second law enforcement, my longest job, in September of 10, and then came here in August of 11 to Laverne PD. But it's grown exponentially compared to many others. And um, I'll tell you this much, we just had a trooper, young trooper in Chattanooga uh, my son called me a few minutes ago. He was at State Route 153 in U.S. 27, and somebody, a male, I don't know age, uh, decided that he would use an AK-47 with a drum magazine and started firing at him and peppered up his Ford utility, and he was slightly injured. He got a ricochet of part of a round, apparently, that hit him in the leg, he's going to be okay. He's not even going to the hospital, but he did get a good headshot on the bad guy. So hopefully he doesn't make it because he's got a lot of heat wherever he's going. That's right. Chief, one other thing. Can you go over um, the seniors and kids Christmas? Yes, sir. I'll be glad to do that. That's why we put it in there. It's uh, scroll on down, Glenn, to the uh, – the page on the, uh, there you go. It's pretty self-explanatory. Thanksgiving and Christmas for our kids and seniors was unreal. Um, at Thanksgiving, we had 58 families that were helped. 
uh, with food boxes, uh, which fed 274 people within those families. At Christmas, we had 76 families uh, that we helped with Christmas and food as well, and that was 323 people total. We had uh, Smyrna West and Rock Springs Middle, as we've done. We helped them deliver both fire and police, and we found one mama and uh, a sixth grader and an eighth grader <clears throat> who had nothing in their home, people here in the community stepped up and there was a trailer and truckload of furniture and clothing and food and Christmas from many different people uh, who, who uh, helped out with that family. But you'll see a list of, and I know there's gotta be some that are not on the list for whatever reason because it just didn't, it slipped through the crack to be honest with you and that's all it was. We had a lot of people, a lot of people that helped. And it makes you feel good. You know, we, we chose to move to Laverne. We wanted to move here, and we love Laverne. And I'm talking about my family. And this is awesome, absolutely awesome, with the way people stepped up to help others in our community, and that's why we love it. But uh, no shave November, double down December, and then the January <coughs> challenge that we had, we had $3,940 of what we utilized for Christmas for kids um, that came actually from within the Laverne Police Department. That makes me really proud. That's our own people who are out here every day working and helping in the community uh, who contributed. Now they got to wear, dress down a little. Uh, they got to do beards and so on and so forth. So that was a little incentive, but that's pretty awesome when you yes, think sir. about it. Thank you. I'm glad that the mayor brought that up because I definitely was going to say something. I, th I think it's wonderful. All the bad stuff that you guys got to deal, you and the women have to deal with every day is that's what you do, that's your job. But this stuff here is above and beyond. And I just wanted to uh, throw that out also with the Santa cop and that ridiculous Laverne Grinch thing. Uh, well, I, now I'm going to take up. The, I'm going to take up for the Grinch. Well, I, I'm his the nemesis, Grinch, so I have I to hope, talk bad about him. I hope the Grinch comes back because the Grinch gave us an opportunity to get some of our safety messages out too. Yes, he did. And that helped tremendously, and we tried to utilize that. But you know, more than that, Chief, he brought so many smiles to so many adults and children. And it, it helped bring back a little bit of union that was so divided. So uh, he won't get any recognition other than that, so we want to make sure he gets Now, wait home. a minute. We don't know if the Grinch is male or female. That's just the Grinch. <laughs> I said he... We don't know if the you Grinch is male or female. Or, or she Are you or kidding me? <laughs> <laughs> I guess that's the society we live in. It could be a female. I'm not going there. Hey, Chief, <laughs> one other thing. So going back to the, uh, the young adult crime and the uh, juvenile crime, are we in agreement that if parents get back to parenting, that would also help you guys? <laughs> That's quite a bit of it. Part of it is society in and of itself and the climate in our country today, to be honest with you, because you see more and more young people stepping up and stepping out. Uh, when I graduated from high school in 1971, I wouldn't have thought a thing in the world about going somewhere and raising cane, protesting, jumping up and down, screaming and yelling. Uh, I had my own opinions about things, but you know, I talked amongst friends and family, et cetera. But, Times have changed. We have, uh, I can tell you one, one quick story. We served a search warrant uh, about a year and a half, two years ago here in the city. And we had two young men who were brothers who the older of the two uh, was selling dope. And when we got there, there was no parent in the home. And we were able to contact the uncle, the mo mother's brother. The mother was a single parent. She worked two full-time jobs and was working a part-time job that evening when we went there. 
Conrad, I think you'll remember, because we had to hold the uh, the uncle when he got there. We had to kind of hold him back to keep him from uh, extending some disciplinary actions. Right. But he point blank told them, your mama's out here killing herself working. Uh, you boys look at the the clothes you've got, your iPhones, you look at the, this, that, and the other, and a car, and so on, and, and you're out here doing this. Now, there are a lot of good families out there who have that, but unfortunately, we got some that, uh, for whatever reason, parents aren't parents. But it's always been that way in the world. It's just that it seems like there are a few more today than before. But I as just, far as the overwhelming majority of the kids, I've been in LHS an awful lot. Uh, if you'll look and see what we had with the junior ROTC uh, when Colonel Shirley and uh, First Sergeant Sanchez came and brought them and delivered $1,000 in gift cards for us to hand out in lieu of tickets. And there was a, a lot of comments about that on social media. And it was very heartwarming for us. I've been out and I've seen kids in the criminal justice club that have won the championship three years in a row, overall championship. Um, I know a lot of kids. I've had kids that have been in my home for years that are LHS. We've hired a lot of LHS grads <coughs> since I've been here. And a lot of good kids there. They're not all bad. That's right. We have bad kids, yeah, they do bad things. We have bad adults that do bad things. But uh, the Ohio majority aren't. That's right. They're good kids. All right, thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you, Chief. Codes Department, Mr. Randolph Salyers. <clears throat> Glenn, if you'll roll on down to the year end 2019, please, sir. I'd focus mainly on that for this. That one? No, sir, one more. There you go. Um, that gives you an idea of what we did in 2019 as far as the residential commercial. <coughs> um, quite a bit of investment made into this community over the last 12 months, and uh, I suspect we'll continue to see it um, carry over into the, into the next year. Uh, you can see the total number of single family permits issued during the same time period last year was 254, this year was 488. So that gives you some idea of how busy we've been with the fact that we've had 3,800 inspections throughout the year as well. So I'd like to say that um, I did miss about six and a half months, five and a half months of 2019. So I can't take much of the credit at all. Credit goes to the staff that we have in place there in the code department. We all uh, keep our heads to the ground, our face and heads to the grindstone and keep, keep, uh, keep, keep the ball rolling. Uh, this report that you see for 2019 will be the last of its kind we are, that's the last of the historical data that we had prior to us going into intergov. Now, some of the, some of the, 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 the permits that we did issue the mid November through December on intergov, we've got them included in this report just for historical records that, you know, what we did in 2019, but in 2012, or excuse me, 2020, you'll see a different report from us. That'll be a bit more in, in detail and, and give you a better idea of exactly what's what's being permitted in, in Laverne. And that's also the same system that the public can pull up, right? I'm sorry, man. Is that the same system that the public can pull up? Uh, it will be. Yeah. I mean, it, 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 at some point in time, we're gonna roll out the uh, the uh, citizen side of it. We, we've done some limited testing. Of course, you know, we were able to test what we could, when we could, you know, it was most, mostly through the holidays. And, and I suspect that in the conference call that I'll have with that group next week that that uh, we'll talk more about when we're going to roll out the customer service side. I mean, obviously, we're, I don't think that we're going to just open it wide open for the public to use. We're going to try to, you know, encourage some of the builders, some of the contractors that that uh, we feel it's a little bit on the tech-savvy side, unlike 
you know, some 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 of the builders they they're a little bit intimidated by it, just the same as we were. But once they get the once they once they realize the ease and the comfort that they'll have in you know, in making those applications from home, middle of the evening, you know, pay for their permits, middle of the evening, print their permit. Um, it's not that we're trying to eliminate our workload. It's we're trying to make it easier for, you know. User for, friendly. Exactly. Thank you. Good, good, good analogy. So, um, you know, I hope that, um, that it is successful for, you know, the residents who, who, who want to do room additions, driveways, storage buildings, pools, decks, you know, things of that nature. We'll, we'll, um, we'll work with them through that. I know that there's been some talk about having a kiosk in our building for, those that walk in, you know, who may not have the, the computer equipment at home to do so, they can come to the to our building mm -hmm. and we're there to assist them in, in, in getting their applications, you know, there on the spot. So we're we're gonna do everything we can to try and, you know, make it so that uh, the next generation, future generations of citizens of Laverne will they won't think twice about it. If they wanna apply they'll they'll bring up that, that link on our website and have at it so i'm excited about it i know That's there's, right. there's i know your staff to, is pardon i know the staff is excited about well it. i mean you know there's like anything else change is difficult change is hard i'm i'm not accustomed to change but i see the need and i'm willing to overlook the fact that there's changes made i mean i can't we're 20 20 years into this this century you know at what point in time you're going to finally have to say hey look we're you know we need to stay stay in tune with, with, with other jurisdictions. I mean, it's just the, the sign of the times. This is a great efficiency tool that will hopefully make it easier for all people, whether it's residents or uh, anyone needing any type of permit. Right. So, um, and I've got to commend you and your team. I know um, y'all been responding to a lot of different codes requests as far as um, complaints, violations, going out and talking to people and you know, working with them. Some didn't know, some didn't care, but working through it so that we can get our city to a pristine spot. Well, I've 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 said this too about 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 this community. It's a lot, it's it, a lot of great people live here. I've worked here almost eight years now, and there's you know I encounter wonderful individuals all day long every day. There 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 was a time in Laverne when 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 you didn't have the the caring, nurturing folks here that took care of things, they just, so I've often said that generation is gonna have to either be retrained, <laughs> reschooled somehow, but I hope we're trying to instill in the future generation our desires as we move forward in, into, you know, the next era of this century that, you know, we continue to instill in their minds that, hey, look, you know, the way it was not always the best way. Let's try to make it better. So <coughs> that's what we're doing day in, day out, <coughs> trying to make it better. Thank you so much, Randolph. Yes, sir. Thank, Thank you, you, sir. Thank you. Mr. David McGowan, Parks and Recreation. Mayor, Vice Mayor Board, thank you. You have the parks numbers um, for the month of December. Some of our upcoming events, Monday, January 20th, will be our Martin Luther King Jr. celebration. February the 1st will be our father-daughter <laughs> dance. Upcoming meetings, January 16th will be the Senior Center Advisory. And on January 27th, we will have a combined meeting, Parks and Rec, and the Greenway Advisory with Reagan Smith making another presentation to both those boards. Um, I'd like to thank a few people. I'm probably going to forget somebody, so if I do, please uh, overlook that. These thanks go out for the community stepping up for our Senior Center over Christmas time. Um, thanks for Roger French, Alderman No, Cardinal Health, Arby's, Melissa Joyner, Carol Haas, Stacey Lanker, Rick Altry, Bridgestone, Inframark, Interact Club, Box 100, and the citizens of Laverne. Um, we'd also like to thank this board for giving them the opportunity to take their trip to Gatlinburg. Um, my understanding was it was um, probably what happens in Gatlinburg stays in Gatlinburg. <laughs> Although I, I do hear there is a video. Um, do you guys have any questions? Because um, I'd like to introduce you all to our new events coordinator um, who started yesterday with us, uh, Mr. Robert Rayburn. Robert, if you'd like to come up. 
Robert comes with us with uh, six years of experience from the city of Clarksville, where he was the events planning supervisor there. Um, we have big hopes and plans for Robert. Um, we're not putting any pressure on him, but he is the face of our department, so uh, we expect good things out of him. Great. If you guys have any questions, I'm sure he'd be more than happy to, to answer them. David, I have a question of you. Yes, sir. Where was the uh, final, what was the destination for the uh, winter formal for the Father Door to Dance? It's going to be at Waldron in their gym, Waldron School. It is going to be that Saturday um, from 2 to 4. And David, if you could, uh, could you speak a little bit about the, the playground renovations? That seems to be uh, on everyone's table right now. Yeah, we're excited for that. Thank you guys for giving us that opportunity to provide that to this community. Um, I think the playground installs in our time frame are probably not the same. I think they're being a little optimistic about when they can have that done. They haven't hit any bad weather yet, and we know they're going to. Yeah. I think the thing that helps us is they're working on a concrete pad instead of in the mud. So if they do get some bad weather, they can still progress with our install. Um, we're taking that opportunity also to revamp our swing sets over there. We're going to try to make the color scheme match of that swing frame to what they're putting in now. Also with the benches, we're going to upgrade those, try to make that color scheme match. Um, they have to pour curb around to retain that mulch. So. Realistically, if we could get it reopened by the 1st of March, I think we'll be in good shape. And I've been asked, uh, it, would there be handicap accessible play areas? There is a inclusive merry-go-round, okay. which, uh, which benefits children of all abilities. Okay. I know that question has come up. Is the total playground inclusive for everyone? The surfacing will be ADA compliant. Um, and it will meet the standards, the safe, safety testing standards for the playground surfacing. Um, I think we're offering more than we have in the past. Right. At least it's a step in the right direction. So I think we offer a little bit of something for everyone. I didn't know how to answer. That's why I wanted to right. ask you direct. And, and um, I think some of those, when it gets out there, I think it's on how certain people interpret what they're reading. Um, but we're, we're excited. We want to provide a safe, enjoyable environment for all of our citizens so with that we we knew that we needed to include something with children right. with some disabilities i've seen the excitement from kids five years old to some of our seniors this evening you know are planning yeah. on going by there driving and I by, think, checking it out so so it's definitely it's great for the community yeah and i think a, a, a bunch of that comes back to the surfacing we're putting in instead of the port in place rubber we're going back with the compacted engineered wood fiber which um, the port in place looks good when it's first installed, but after right. that, it's a nightmare. You can, once it starts tearing up, um, you can go by Waldron School today. They've got it poured under their swing sets, and just that constant traction, it, it comes up. Once it starts coming up and children realize they can tear it up, then does that act, in my mind, that actually becomes a more hazard, unsafe yeah. than a mulched playground. And David, this is a $200,000 investment in our, our kids. Um, for that area, and it's also the, it's the first major work done there since the 90s. Is that that's correct? Right. That's correct. Um, and when we when we decided to get away from the port in place, we could offer more equipment to absorb some of that cost because just that rubber alone was probably going to eat up the majority of that budget. It was probably going to be close to nine thousand dollars just to repour that surfacing with rubber. So, going with the engineer wood fiber. We could probably mulch that thing upwards of 20 years for the cost of that one expense up front. Wonderful. So, Robert, yes. is that correct? Yes, sir. All right. Well, first of all, it's good to meet you, and I'm looking forward to working with you as the board and as the chairman of Park and Rec. And, and I hope that you are ready to take the bull by the horns. We've got a lot of good things, and we've got a lot of work to do. you got great people that's going to be behind you. And we, we hope that you can, David was telling me a little bit about you got some great contacts and, and that's what we need. But more importantly, we need somebody that's going to work hard and uh, do us a good job. So I'm excited about it. I'm glad we finally got somebody and, and I look forward to uh, seeing what you can do. I'm not trying to put pressure on you, just trying to make you feel it, <laughs> trying to make no, you no feel No pressure. It. Trying to make you feel at home and welcome you to the city, and uh, I, I think you'll find that David and his people and 
this board will, will be behind you, 100%. So next month when you come in here, you'll have maybe some Nike pants or a, a collar <laughs> shirt or something. It, it's not always going to be like this. Don't worry. <laughs> Congratulations. We're, we're happy that you're here. Thank you. Any questions on the report? Thank one, you both. One other thing. If you guys can make it out for a Martin Luther King celebration, please come mm -hmm. out. Um, Dr. Sidney McPhee, the president of MTSU, is going to be one of our guest speakers, and uh, we'd really like to have a good turnout for him to be here. Thank no, you guys. I, I was there last year for that, as along with uh, Alderman Jones. Is that something, do we need to sign up to speak at that this year? Well, we kind of already had the itinerary filled out, but if you'd like to say a few words. Yeah, so if you'll just add me to that, thank you. Yes, sir. All right, thank you. Finance Department, Ms. Phyllis Rogers. Good afternoon, Mayor, Vice Mayor, and Alderman. You have the uh, November financial report in your packet. Uh, I'd like to uh, go over a few different things tonight. Um, I wanted to update you guys on our property tax collections. As of today, we're at about 48.5% of our budget. Our budget's $7.8 million. Um, sales tax collections are um, continuously staying above what we budgeted for this time of the year. Um, we are proud to announce that we now have online property tax payment um, uh, system in place. Uh, you can go to our city webpage, and there's a link there, just like the uh, water billing payments. You can go there, and now we now have property tax. And you can also call in. You can also... Uh, you know, do it from the convenience of your home. You don't have to come run down the city hall to pay your taxes anymore. Um, January is a very busy month for the finance department. Uh, we're busy working on W-2s, 1099s, ACA forms. Uh, it's a very busy month for us. Uh, right after we get through with budgets, we'll start right up into uh, working on getting the budget models together and talking to department heads over the next couple of months. Um, we are also in the process of going um, with an online system with our some of our payroll information. We're getting really close to um, pushing out that link, hopefully with the help of uh, Glenn and working along with local government. Uh, we'll be able to have some um, information available for our employees online. They can view check stubs, W-2s, um, tax records, um, you know, any some of the available information for them. Um, Bank account balances are holding steady, in good shape. Uh, for the water billing department, uh, we're continuously monitoring uh, water loss and uh, analyzing our billing and auditing billing and looking for uh, issues that we need to resolve. Um, we have improved our communication with our uh, customers in water billing as far as uh, past due accounts. We are now doing not only um, courtesy calls. We're also sending out letters for those that we can't reach by phone or some of those that have um, past dues have just kind of slipped a, a little bit too long over time. Um, any questions tonight? Thank you, Phyllis. Moving on to the library department, Miss Donna B. Bell. Welcome back up here. Mayor, Vice Mayor Alderman, good evening. And first of all, thank you so much for that recognition. Mm -hmm especially very surprised recognition. I appreciate it. If you will notice for the month of December, their numbers are there and all of those numbers reflect that we were open only 18 days in December. So do keep that in mind when you look at the numbers. Uh, some things that I'd like to bring to your attention is of course our volunteer income tax assistant is coming back. It's called VITA. It's sponsored by the United Way of Rutherford and County, Cannon Counties. Uh, we will start tentatively on Friday, January 31st at the Laverne Public Library from 9 a.m. until 12 p.m. And then that will be every Friday and Saturday. It is the first come, first serve. There are just a few criteria that I'll be able to get back out to you and we'll have it, of course, on our electronic sign and we'll have it out by signs. Uh, generally, you need to make under 61000 in order to qualify for this free tax assist assistance. Uh, the last day will be April the 4th that they will have it at the library. Uh, VITA will also be at Smyrna Public Libraries and also at Patterson Park in Murfreesboro. 
Our library board's gonna meet this coming Monday, January 13th at five o'clock here at City Hall in the boardroom. And then details for all of our programs, and we have a lot of programs going on, and events, all of those are available on our website. And we're really excited to talk about a new quarterly calendar that we're coming out with. This is usually the calendar that we send out, well, we have available each month, and it's on our website. We're getting so many programs going on, it's hard to squish everything on here. So we're going to go to a three-month, a little bit more professional-looking newsletter. This one is just an example that we're working on at this time. This is January, February, and March. It will show all the programs that's going on. It gives our hours. It uh, gives you all of the resources that we have available, phone numbers to call, fax numbers. And I think it's just going to be really helpful. It also has the QR code where you can scan it with your smartphone and go directly to our catalog or scan and go directly to our Facebook page. So we're really excited about that. Um, do you have any questions? Uh, are are y'all going to have the, I, I would assume so, but just want to check the uh, VITA program. That will be pushed out as well on social media um, and probably in our, our uh, monthly newsletter for the city as well. Absolutely. Yes, we will get all of that information out through all the resources that we possibly can. Wonderful. So, Ms. Donna, when you, uh, when something like that new pamphlet is created, is that something you guys do in-house? In it is. That's great. Uh, we're very proud to say that being an independent library that is supported by the city, uh, we're able to really do everything in-house and with the budget that we receive, it really makes it possible and the creativeness and the, uh, the great workers that we have. Uh, but it is something that we do in-house. And, and with the budget, bringing up the budget, on your library board, how, how in-depth are they into the budget? Do they, do, do, do they bring to the table with that? Generally, I work very closely with Phyllis, like all of the department heads do. Right. We go over all of our numbers, and then I bring that to the library board. They look over it. Uh, they give feedback as necessary. Um, generally, our budget is pretty, this is what we're going to use. Uh, but we do, of course, accept any suggestions, and we go from there. All right. Thank you. You're welcome. Donna, I've got to say you've got an amazingly talented staff. Yes. They're always friendly, always smiling in there, and um, you've got a great team there. Thank you. Thank you so much. Water treatment pl plant, Mr. Greg Purcell. Good evening, board. Uh, in the month of December, uh, Inframark treated 117 million gallons of water, delivered 98 million gallons of water. Um, all preventative maintenance items were taken care of uh, using our new software eMate. And the biggest uh, project at the plant in December and rolled into January a little bit was the new laser turbidimeters that are on all the filters. So that is up and running at this time. Any question? <coughs> the, uh, the balance of your... Um I guess your maintenance cap. Yes, sir. It's it's pretty low. Yes, sir. We got until you know we have several more months. So we're, you're aware of that, and we're aware of it. Are we in good shape? You feel uh, the maintenance cap actually starts over February first of this 1st. year. Okay. So and with those numbers, we'll actually you know we're we're still good on the maintenance cap. Great. Yeah, that starts over in February with the contract year. I know doing internal maintenance has really saved us a lot of money. Yes, sir. Similar to what the fire department's doing with with the our garage city shop now so you guys uh, kind of doing your own thing over there is helping us out yes sir we have a great staff and it's uh we can always save money when we don't have to call out that's right outside people that saves the city money and the taxpayers mm -hmm. money when we have talented people internally that can take care of those items i think a pleasure. one thing that we're seeing at least in these monthly reports is that whereas we've gotten out more word on how people can contact your department and the water treatment plant for testing and for complaints, that that's gradually going down with complaints and right. you know actual reasons for it, such as different pressure valves or different things are, are being identified as reasons why not the quality of water. The quality of water has been stepping up over 
uh, the last year, and we're hopefully going to keep going higher with that. So good job to your team with that. Thank you, sir. We appreciate it. Thank you. Public Works Department, Mr. Garland Russell. Good afternoon, Mayor Holland. Uh, you have our numbers for the month. Um, I think we're down a lot on our brush pickups. I think we're going through the city pretty quick now, and probably on into this the end of this month, first of next month, we're probably going to start shutting it down and running it a couple days a week instead of just driving through the town all the time, you know, finding, or maybe letting them call in, and then we'll pick up from there. Uh, maintenance, uh, they're staying busy on maintenance. Uh, in the street department on the signs and everything we're placing this time of year, stuff we can see to get cut down. We had a little project out by the chief's house and cut some trees down for uh, people to be able to see a little better. I'm hoping that's working, but uh, as far as the shop goes, they're staying busy every day. Well, that, that, that tree cutting, I'm glad you mentioned that because uh, we've seen some comments from residents there and they appreciate it. And I know there's there's been some issues with some uh, potentially old and dead trees. And then there's, as far as people being able to, to see out, to see how people are coming down the hill on Waldron Road and be able to make that turn safely. And we're going safely. to paint that stop bar down there. But when we ordered, the, we couldn't buy the paint around here. When we ordered it through Amazon, uh, we got five gallons of white paint, but they sent us five gallons of yellow paint. So we're waiting for it to come back in and try to get a nice day to get out there. You're going to paint what? A stop bar. Oh, a stop bar. That's that white thing. It, I know what it I, is. I, I just I didn't hear it. it. <laughs> Garland, I want to share a. Uh, you want to go there? Share a <laughs> Facebook message with that. you. Um, Montgomery Lane, they complimented the speedy response from your staff that, that hung that sign, Children at Play. And this was several back in December um, of 2018. Mm -hmm. And then um, this year, um, they were telling me that this, that's what we were talking about earlier. Someone stole the sign, a children at play sign. They, they took the bolts and everything off. That of happens. It. So I, I guess that's something that we learn as uh, aldermen and mayors. You know, you guys are out there doing it. Um, sometimes people uh, just want it more than, than you do or, or want, I mean, want it more than we had, do. We've had officers, I've had officers call me that they'll go on a call and be standing by the garage and see stop signs and all. So they turn them over, but right. we, we have a lot of them that get stolen. Garland, can you uh, touch real quick, because I know we, we've seen some emails and some questions about when paving, or not, when road paving for the, the next set of roads that have already been approved will be starting and how that works with the weather? Uh, right now, uh, well, the Rogers Group is our, uh, they've got the city contract. Mm -hmm. uh, they don't have any plants open around here. Uh, now, if we got a good week of good weather, he's promised me that we would be first. You know, but they do a lot of government work. Uh, the weather's got a lot to do with it. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, had a lady been calling for a month and said, well, we had sunshiny day for two days. That don't, I mean, that don't, you know, it might be 30 degrees in the morning and get up to 70, but it may be one o'clock by the time they get there, it gets there. So they've got a window of three hours to work and they just, they can't come out for it. They can't afford to fire the plant up. Right. It takes several thousand dollars just to fire it up. But it, it, it we do still have the priority roads and those are yes. going to be as soon as we can get a, a clear patch of weather, which I know yes, we're sir. seeing some weather this weekend mm -hmm. so I'm yeah there you know we're keeping up with the potholes and stuff with all the rain mm -hmm. and stuff we've had it's yeah it's messed up a lot but you know we're we're keeping up with it i think and doing them as we find them writing them down going back you know whatever we got to yep. do but, thank you mm -hmm. thank you utilities department mr michael deets Mayor Autumn, good afternoon. Uh, you have the report there in front of you for your review. I'll be happy to answer any questions that you may have. Uh, one thing I would like to note, there were zero mainline repairs for the month. That's always a good thing. Uh, typically, I'll stand up here and tell you this time of year to remind the citizens to leave some water dripping and things like that, but you may want to start sharpening your lawnmower blades because we're not getting much cold weather. Uh, Amen to that. Couple, couple things to note. We. Uh, 
month of December, the McFarland water tank project. Mm -hmm. The tank is back online. The project is still ongoing. There's a few punch list items that Jamie with Griggs and Maloney is working through, uh, but the tank has been filled and it is in service. Uh, was able to wrap up the PD water line along with City Hall, so they are now separated. Uh, bear with us again, as I mentioned in staff meeting with the cleanup. The weather's been nasty, it's pretty wet out there. Uh, we tried to get to it today, didn't have much luck. So uh, as it dries out, we'll be finishing the cleanup up back here. Any questions? Can you touch on the break yesterday uh, over on Bonacqua, bon Aqua. right in front of the plant? Yes, sir, absolutely. Uh, fiber, as we all know, they're, they're installing fiber all throughout the city. Uh, they hit a six inch water main, crew was on site. Within two hours we had it repaired. Wonderful, wonderful. Yes. I know some people were driving through and they saw y'all looking at the hole. And Yes sir, and again I'd like to note um, the water plant, it, it just goes hand in hand again, mm -hmm. the communication there. We, we actually received the call uh, from the contractor that hit it uh, with our Tennessee One Call personnel. So we was on the phone with him when Danny from the plant called. So, I mean, it just goes hand in hand. He seen it immediately, called me, hey, we've got a break. I was like, yes, sir, we're on the phone right now. So communication's there, and it's awesome. It's a good partnership, and the, and the community found out rather quickly as well with the, the, the as far as social media. Yes, sir. Yes, yeah, And with that, uh, so the one call and everything, they, they had all proper notifications? Yes, sir, they did have all proper, proper notifications. Uh, you know, it's just when you're going underground, things happen sometimes. Yeah, hey, I know. Yeah. You know, you don't make that call, that, that contractor would be paying the Absolutely. bill. Absolutely. So yes, it, it, it's yep. a free service, so it's yep. highly recommended to uh, to use. To use it, yes, sir. Unfortunately. It's everyone out of trouble. Yep. Fortunately, accidents do happen, but your team did a great job getting that fixed. Yes, sir. Any questions on the report? No questions, but you know I got a comment. Uh, Michael and his staff, Adam, Harley, putting it together, took care of a lady that lives across the interstate from me yesterday, and she's had a 30-year problem, which I think 30 years is pretty ample time. And they went over there and took care of it. And uh, again, I just want to say thank you. She was very content. You guys got the job done. So, you know, that's one down and several to go, but at least it's, it's a start, and I want to thank you guys. Yes, really. sir, thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Mayor. Human Resources, Cheryl Lewis-Smith. Cheryl was the big winner at our uh, senior citizen. Yes. What'd she win? I done forgot. She, was, she won a big, oh, a uh, poinsettia. poinsettia. Yeah. Yes. And then turned around and donated it back to the seniors. Yes. Wonderful, wonderful. I was excited to be there. So good evening, Mayor, Vice Mayor, and Alderman. I'm happy to say that Human Resources is off and running for 2020. We had a very wonderful uh, 2019 year, and it ended with quite a few holiday celebrations. And again, I was very pleased to have received an invite from the seniors. They did a wonderful job, and um, it was very touching. So again, I encourage everyone to please try to continue to go out and support our seniors and visit some of the activities and just get involved. So again, I thank the seniors for that invite. It was very festive, so had a great time. Also want to announce that our employees are very excited about a new opportunity. We're getting ready to partner with Planet Fitness in the city of Laverne. Our full-time employees have the opportunity to have a basic membership for themselves. And um, we're going to encourage wellness. And, and this is very, very unique, one-of-a-kind opportunity. And so we're excited about that launch. And we hope that that will be up and running fully within the next week. So I am pleased to talk about that, as well as all of our additional um, safety and wellness activities in the city. The employees do a great job of monitoring. Uh, if you see something, say something, and, and we're working very hard to continue our success in that area. And just excited about all the benefit enhancements for 2020. Um, thank you, board, for approving the enhancements and, and our benefit program in general. And you have the report. Um, in front of you. So does anyone have any questions or anything that you'd like to inquire? Cheryl, can you talk about the new performance review that you and I have been working on? Yes. 
we are also going to launch something that is well needed. Um, it's a performance appraisal. It's a development tool that we're going to sit down with our employees on a annual basis. We're going to kick it off with a six-month review, and then we're going to go annually uh, where we're going to have discussions. It's a planning tool where employees know where they are. You know, we can talk about benchmarks, goals, and things of that nature. And we're going to sit down and we're going to have conversations about performance and expectations on a regular. So that way, we don't want employees to be, you know, in the lurch as far as not understanding where they are as far as performance and progressing and, and expectations from management. and also to hear their concerns about how things are going from their point of view. So we're excited about that. So we will be launching that and we will get back with you probably a little bit later as to the specific tool. So that way it will be out there for everybody to review. Any questions? Nope. Thank you, Cheryl. Thank you. Moving on to old business. Second reading ordinance 2019-41, an ordinance to amend Title 20, Chapter 4 of the Laverne Municipal Code regarding public records. Need a motion to approve or deny? I'll make a motion to approve. I have a motion to approve from Vice Mayor Brown. Need a second. Second. Second from Alderman Jones. Alderman Church. No. Alderman, uh, no? Aye. Alderman Jones. Aye. Vice Mayor Brown. Aye. Motion passes. Second reading, Ordinance 2019-42, an ordinance to amend Title 18, Chapter 3 of the Laverne Municipal Code regarding the sewer use ordinance. Need a motion to approve or deny? I make a motion we approve. I have a motion to approve from Alderman Church. Need a second? Second. Second from Alderman Jones. Alderman Jones. Aye. Alderman No? Aye. Alderman Church. Aye. Vice Mayor Brown? Aye. Motion passes. Second reading, Ordinance 2019-43, an ordinance to amend Title 8, Chapter 3 of the Laverne Municipal Code regarding beer. Need a motion to approve or deny? Make a motion we approve. I have a motion to approve from Alderman Church. Need a second? Second. Second from Alderman No. Alderman Church. I'm sorry? It, you're voting. Uh, oh, aye. Alderman No? Aye. Alderman Jones? Aye. Vice Mayor Brown? Aye. Motion passes. Second reading, Ordinance 2019-44, an ordinance to amend Article 4, Section 4.070 of the Laverne Zoning Ordinance as it pertains to signs. This received a favorable recommendation from the Planning Commission on November 26, 2019. Need a motion to approve or deny? I make a motion we approve. I have a motion to approve from Alderman Church. Need a second? Second. Second from Alderman Jones. Alderman Church. Aye. Alderman No. Aye. Alderman Jones. Aye. Vice Mayor Brown. Aye. Motion passes. Moving on to the consent agenda. Need a motion to approve. Make a motion to approve. I have a motion to approve. Need a second. Second. Second from Alderman Jones. All in favor? Aye. 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 Consent agenda passes. Moving on to new business. First reading ordinance 2020-01. In order to amend Title II, Chapter 6, Section 2-601 of the Laverne Municipal Code regarding the membership of the Local Emergency Planning Commission. Need a motion to approve or deny? Make a motion to approve. I have a motion to approve from Alderman Jones. Need a second? A second. Second from Vice Mayor Brown. Alderman Jones? Aye. Alderman Church? Aye. Alderman No? Aye. Vice Mayor Brown? Aye. Motion passes. Resolution 2020-01, a resolution of the City of Laverne Board of Mayor and Aldermen to declare a property owned by the city to be surplus to the city's needs and directing disposal of the same. Need a motion to approve or deny? Motion to approve. Motion to approve from Alderman Jones. Need a second? A second. Second from Vice Mayor Brown. Alderman Jones? Aye. Alderman Church? Aye. Alderman No? Aye. Vice Mayor Brown? Aye. Motion passes. Moving on to number 11, we've got A, beer board. We have one term expired, and we have Anthony Honeycutt, who has applied to be on this board. I'll go ahead and say that he should be appointed to this board. 
All in favor? Aye. Aye. So congratulations to Mr. Honeycutt. Next we have the um, Historical Board, Historical Preservation Advisory Committee. We have uh, two vacancies and we have one application from Rhonda Humphrey. I'll go ahead and appoint her to that. All in favor? Aye. 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 Then moving on, we have library board. We have four terms, or we have three terms expiring, one term vacant. We have four applicants, Bridget Cole, Gary Frazier, Linda Steed, and Brianna King. Our, appoint them all to, the, to that board. All in favor? Aye. 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 No. I feel that we may have a conflict of interest. Well, we just had to vote with, we had four ayes and one no. I was explaining my no. I just feel that we may have a conflict of interest. Okay, and then D, Local Emergency Planning Commission. We've got six terms expired and one vacant, and I will put back on there Mr. Dietz, Green, Mrs. Rogers, Mr. Rose, Mr. Russell, Mr. Salyers. All in favor? Aye. 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 Moving on to Mayor and Alderman comments. Alderman, no. I just want to say, uh, follow up with David, that uh, thanks for getting behind us and, and helping us with uh, our Gatlinburg trip. Bruce, I know you had to step in and do make sure all the legal stuff, and we appreciate it. The seniors, I was going to make a fun of them, but they left, so I can't do that. Uh, the 23rd, where I sent everybody an email about the bean supper at the senior center so you can't go anywhere for five bucks yeah you just can't do it and eat and also i'm excited about the master plan for the parks uh, i think that's a a big big thing that's going to happen and i know david's worked hard on that and i'm excited about our new guy for uh, uh event coordinator that's it alderman church um first of all i'd like to um Thanks, Representative, uh, State Representative Mike Sparks for the invitation tonight to his uh, chili cook-off um, there in Smyrna. Um, I also want to uh, let the citizens know, working with um, Chief Walker and other people in the community, uh, religious leaders, um, you know, we, we, we are very well aware of um, what's been going on with the, the kids the juveniles and young adults, and uh, we all are in agreement that it's it's not the worst. It, it, what needs to be done is is not to publicize it so much. I think that that's part of the problem. Uh, we're making these kids heroes when they do get in trouble, and um, but uh, the chief's got a plan, and and we're going to support Laverne Police Department uh, tomorrow uh, morning. I thought the meeting was Thursday, but it's tomorrow. I meet with uh, Director Spurlock with uh, the Rutherford County School System to discuss uh, some of the needs that we need here in Laverne. And I'm just really excited to, you know, to be a board member. It's a new year. Um, 2020 is going to be uh, the year for Laverne. I really see it. Economic development team is hot on it. Um, that's it. Thank you. Alderman Jones. Look forward to 2020. Look forward to working with everyone. Thank you. Vice Mayor Brown. Well, it is a new year, and I'm really excited about this. But I just want to take a minute to kind of recognize our employees. I know I do this from time to time. I'm passionate about our employees. Um, let me kind of just enumerate some of the reasons why. We have an award-winning staff here. We have staff members and employees that will go training on – go – get training on their own time, pay with their own time, and broaden their horizons as far as their professional um, aspirations here within the, the city. We have employees that work together really well in our departments. Um, communication is above the bar. There is a, a feeling of friendliness and helpfulness that goes throughout every department. There's a lot of um, cross training that's happened where one department can jump in and help another department. Mm -hmm. There, 
these employees work really hard for the city and they're constantly being awarded and recognized outside of the city, looking into the city. And I just want to take a minute to thank all of them for all their hard work. It's in every department. It's every, every, almost every employee is just really above the bar and it means so much to the city. And it really reflects in the way that the citizens are treated, the way that the services are provided to the citizens. And I just really want to recognize them for 2020. So I hope you all achieve your goals. Thank you. Thank you. Well, it is 2020, and um, we've got some some new and bright things coming for the city, and we're, we're going to take this city forward inch by inch. Um, I do want to thank Leadership Rutherford for inviting me yesterday to the local government day with uh, Mayor Bill Kittren, with Mayor Lehman, Mayor McFarland, and then Vice Mayor of Smyrna, where we got to meet with Leadership Rutherford and talk about what we do as mayors throughout the city and how each city is unique, but we all share some of the same goals and how we interact with each other. I also want to thank Mayor Bill Kittren and Commissioner Wayne Blair for their invitation to the county and state delegation meeting that was earlier in the week where we got to hear what some of the county's goals are because while, yes, we are Laverne, we are in and part of Rutherford County. So it was good to hear some of that and have some good conversations with them. With that, call this meeting adjourned.